April 2. Gideon defeats the Midianites. So Jeroboam, that is, Gideon, and his army got up early and went as far as the spring of Herod. The armies of Midian were camped north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they save themselves by their own strength. Therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid may leave this mountain and go home. So 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. But the Lord told Gideon, There are still too many. Bring them down to the spring, and I will test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. When Gideon took his warriors down to the water, the Lord told him, Divide the men into two groups. In one group, put all those who cup water in their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. In the other group, put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Only three hundred of the men drank from their hands. All the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. The Lord told Gideon, With these three hundred men I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So Gideon collected the provisions and ram's horns of the other warriors and sent them home. But he kept the three hundred men with him. The Midianite camp was in the valley just below Gideon. That night the Lord said, Get up, go down into the Midianite camp, for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura. Listen to what the Midianites are saying, and you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. So Gideon took Pura and went down to the edge of the enemy camp. The armies of Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east had settled in the valley like a swarm of locusts. Their camels were like grains of sand on the seashore, too many to count. Gideon crept up just as a man was telling his companion about a dream. The man said, I had this dream, and in my dream a loaf of barley bread came tumbling down into the Midianite camp. It hit a tent, turned it over, and knocked it flat. His companion answered, Your dream can mean only one thing. God has given Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite, victory over Midian and all its allies. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed in worship before the Lord. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, Get up, for the Lord has given you victory over the Midianite hordes. He divided the three hundred men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he said to them, Keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horns, blow your horns too, all around the entire camp, and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. It was just after midnight, after the changing of the guard, when Gideon and the one hundred men with him reached the edge of the Midianite camp. Suddenly they blew the ram's horns and broke their clay jars. Then all three groups blew their horns and broke their jars. They held the blazing torches in their left hands and the horns in their right hands, and they all shouted a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Each man stood at his position around the camp and watched as all the Midianites rushed around in a panic, shouting as they ran to escape. When the three hundred Israelites blew their ram's horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their swords. Those who were not killed fled to places as far away as Beth Shittah, near Zerirah, and to the border of Abel Mehola, near Tabith. Then Gideon sent for the warriors of Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, who joined in chasing the army of Midian. Gideon also sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down to attack the Midianites. Cut them off at the shallow crossings of the Jordan River at beth Barah. So all the men of Ephraim did as they were told. They captured Oreb and Zeb, the two Midianite commanders, killing Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. And they continued to chase the Midianites. Afterward, the Israelites brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan River. Gideon kills Zeba and Zalmunna. Then the people of Ephraim asked Gideon, Why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you send for us when you first went out to fight the Midianites? And they argued heatedly with Gideon. But Gideon replied, What have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't even the leftover grapes of Ephraim's harvest better than the entire crop of my little clan of Abizer? God gave you victory over Oreb and Zeb, the commanders of the Midianite army. What have I accomplished compared to that? When the men of Ephraim heard Gideon's answer, their anger subsided. 
Gideon then crossed the Jordan River with his 300 men, and though exhausted, they continued to chase the enemy. When they reached Succoth, Gideon asked the leaders of the town, Please give my warriors some food. They are very tired. I am chasing Zeba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Succoth replied, Catch Zeba and Zalmunna first, and then we will feed your army. So Gideon said, After the Lord gives me victory over Zeba and Zalmunna, I will return and tear your flesh with the thorns and briars from the wilderness. From there Gideon went up to Peniel and again asked for food, but he got the same answer. So he said to the people of Peniel, After I return in victory, I will tear down this tower. By this time Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkor with 15,000 warriors, all that remained of the allied armies of the east, for 120,000 had already been killed. Gideon circled around by the caravan route east of Noba and Jagbia, taking the Midianite army by surprise. Zeba and Zalmunna, the two Midianite kings, fled, but Gideon chased them down and captured all their warriors. After this, Gideon returned from the battle by way of Harry's Pass. There he captured a young man from Succoth and demanded that he write down the names of all the seventy-seven officials and elders in the town. Gideon then returned to Succoth and said to the leaders, Here are Zeba and Zalmunna. When we were here before, you taunted me, saying, Catch Zeba and Zalmunna first, and then we will feed your exhausted army. Then Gideon took the elders of the town and taught them a lesson, punishing them with thorns and briars from the wilderness. He also tore down the tower of Peniel and killed all the men in the town. Then Gideon asked Zeba and Zalmunna, The men you killed at Tabor, what were they like? Like you, they replied. They all had the look of a king's son. They were my brothers, the sons of my own mother, Gideon exclaimed. As surely as the Lord lives, I wouldn't kill you if you hadn't killed them. Turning to Jether, his oldest son, he said, Kill them. But Jether did not draw his sword, for he was only a boy and was afraid. Then Zeba and Zalmunna said to Gideon, Be a man, kill us yourself. So Gideon killed them both and took the royal ornaments from the necks of their camels. Gideon's Sacred Ephod Then the Israelites said to Gideon, Be our ruler. You and your son and your grandson will be our rulers, for you have rescued us from Midian. But Gideon replied, I will not rule over you, nor will my son. The Lord will rule over you. However, I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring from the plunder you collected from your fallen enemies. The enemies, being Ishmaelites, all wore gold earrings. Gladly, they replied. They spread out a cloak, and each one threw in a gold earring he had gathered from the plunder. The weight of the gold earrings was forty-three pounds, not including the royal ornaments and pendants, the purple clothing worn by the kings of Midian, or the chains around the necks of their camels. Gideon made a sacred ephod from the gold and put it in Ophrah, his hometown. But soon all the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshipping it, and it became a trap for Gideon and his family. That is the story of how the people of Israel defeated Midian, which never recovered. Throughout the rest of Gideon's lifetime, about forty years, there was peace in the land. Then Gideon, son of Joash, returned home. He had seventy sons born to him, for he had many wives. He also had a concubine in Shechem, who gave birth to a son whom he named Abimelech. Gideon died when he was very old, and he was buried in the grave of his father Joash at Ophrah in the land of the clan of Abizer. As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshipping the images of Baal, making Baal Beareth their god. They forgot the Lord their god who had rescued them from all their enemies surrounding them, nor did they show any loyalty to the family of Jerobaal, that is, Gideon, despite all the good he had done for Israel. Abimelech Rules Over Shechem One day Gideon's son Abimelech went to Shechem to visit his uncles, his mother's brothers. He said to them and to the rest of his mother's family, Ask the leading citizens of Shechem whether they want to be ruled by all seventy of Gideon's sons or by one man, and remember that I am your own flesh and blood. So Abimelech's uncles gave his message to all the citizens of Shechem on his behalf. And, after listening to this proposal, the people of Shechem decided in favor of Abimelech, because he was their relative. They gave him seventy silver coins from the temple of Baal-bareth, which he used to hire some reckless troublemakers who agreed to follow him. 
He went to his father's home at Ophrah, and there, on one stone, they killed all seventy of his half-brothers, the sons of Gideon. But the youngest brother, Jotham, escaped and hid. Then all the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo called a meeting under the oak beside the pillar at Shechem and made Abimelech their king. Jotham's Parable When Jotham heard about this, he climbed to the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem! Listen to me if you want God to listen to you! Once upon a time the trees decided to elect a king. First they said to the olive tree, Be our king! But the olive tree refused, saying, Should I quit producing the olive oil that blesses both God and people just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the fig tree, You be our king. But the fig tree also refused, saying, Should I quit producing my sweet fruit just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the grapevine, You be our king. But the grapevine also refused, saying, Should I quit producing the wine that cheers both God and people just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then all the trees finally turned to the thorn bush and said, Come, you be our king. And the thorn bush replied to the trees, If you truly want to make me your king, come and take shelter in my shade. If not, let fire come out from me and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Jotham continued, Now make sure you have acted honorably and in good faith by making Abimelech your king, and that you have done right by Gideon and all of his descendants. Have you treated him with the honor he deserves for all he accomplished? For he fought for you and risked his life when he rescued you from the Midianites. But today you have revolted against my father and his descendants, killing his seventy sons on one stone, and you have chosen his slave woman's son Abimelech to be your king just because he is your relative. If you have acted honorably and in good faith toward Gideon and his descendants today, then may you find joy in Abimelech, and may he find joy in you. But if you have not acted in good faith, then may fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and may fire come out from the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. Then Jotham escaped and lived in Beer because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech.